Hello, my name is Simon Atkinson. I'm going to talk a little bit today about the conceptual learning design within the Dialy framework. I'm going to do this relatively briefly, uh, and there will be opportunities to engage uh, online. I remind you this is part of a, a framework which is under development. It currently has 10 learning designs, and there are various sub-elements to these. So this one, which we're talking about as conceptual or procedural, uh, has a number of elements within it. And the language that we use in some of the literature you've already seen may differ slightly because this is very much uh, a work in progress. But we are dealing here with uh, the development of ideas, um, with some procedural thinking, with higher order thinking skills. Um, we've made no explicit direct reference to the Bloom taxonomy from Bloom and colleagues in the 1950s, but this is very much uh, an evolution, if you like, of those higher order thinking processes. And we're organizing them using a variety of different uh, terminology. I'm going to focus on four, um, hypothesis testing, uh, synthesis and extrapolation, mind mapping and uh, analysis. The hypothesis testing is relatively well established, of course, within the sciences, the notion of predicting, observing, and then explaining. Um, and there are some obvious opportunities here for individuals to pick resources from the archives uh, and perhaps remove either an element of the prediction, an element of the observation, or an element of the explanation. It lends itself uh, very readily in the form of, of video clips where one can literally pause and say, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, and then perhaps play it to the end and say, what is it that, you, how would you explain what you saw? But it also lends itself to some of, for instance, of the medical archives where perhaps our knowledge now would allow us to explain things which perhaps were not clear on the basis of the, the observations being made. One might take some of those resources and perhaps remove elements of, say, the observation and then actually ask students to um, look at filling the gap, as it were. The resources are very rich, they come in a variety of different forms and in some cases you might pick a, an area, a subject area or an approach which has a lot of resource to go with it. Uh, and there are skills clearly in synthesis where one might want students to go through the process of drawing together into a briefer, shorter, more focused presentation, uh, ideas that may be spread um, across a wide variety of different media or may actually simply occur over a significant period of time. So whether it's something historical and one chooses to synthesize the key arguments perhaps for a particular conflict which may have actually lasted for several years and been covered in the press, whether one wants to synthesize the key elements that might have taken place in medical research over a period of five or six uh, years written up in uh, a dozen or so uh, medical papers that the process of synthesis is obviously one that challenges students uh, greatly. One element within this is often the extrapolation of key information from uh, a very wide variety of, of material and so the idea that one might actually ask students to go in and identify perhaps what you might almost think of as key frames uh, and bring that information out is obviously uh, a very interesting challenge for students. The flip side of this is the notion of interpolation, where one is actually potentially filling in gaps. Um, so one has to anticipate what it is that may have been there previously. Um, we mentioned before that with some of the, uh, particularly with the news film online uh, archive, there are elements of the resource where copyright exclusions mean that perhaps a visual is missing and that lends itself very very neatly to this notion of interpolation where students are actually asked to fill the gap uh, that appears in the footage but you yourself may remove a, a quote from from a, an audio clip you may wish to obscure some part of a printed text from the historical archives and students are asked then to fill that gap Engaging with some of this material visually, an example I just cited of going in and actually replacing something that might not have third party clearance, points out some of the richness that exists within the material for getting students to visualize uh, relationships. And 
where one is bringing together perhaps a great many different resources. One might be using video clips uh, alongside to, to perhaps describe uh, a political movement. One might be using video clips um, to complement something that had been written in the press. That under those circumstances, it is perhaps important to get students to visualize the relationships between some of this information and one can do that perhaps by designing mind maps and illustrating things um, in some diagrammatic form. Clearly there's software available to do this but simply to do this uh, on paper in the workshop in a seminar to help explore um, how things fit together is often very very challenging and raises a lot of questions about the nature of those resources. The fourth subcategory within this conceptual learning design um, is analysis and analysis very much forms a part of all of the previous categories that I've spoken about but here I want to think about it very much as uh, breaking down the resource into a variety of constituent parts and that, that's how I'm describing it for this purpose. Um, this is not quite the same as a category which we'll come on to around uh, what we might think of as textual analysis uh, in the context of video sometimes perhaps referred to as cine literacy or video textual analysis. I'm not talking about that kind of analysis but literally the ability to go in and say here is here is a resource here is census data how do I actually go through the process of refining my search refining the evidence that I want to extract from this um, particular program and I think that's quite an important um, process. In the example uh, that I'm going to show you here, um, I want to actually take a single example and talk about it in the context of all four of those subcategories. So you'll see playing on the screen here um, a clip which is actually a silent clip from the news film archive. And you can see from the story title that it's uh, footage of a geophysics research aeroplane filmed in the 1950s, broadcast in June 1956. My suggestion is that this one resource might be used uh, in all four of these different ways. One could actually uh, ask students to look at what it is they think this is experiment is actually taking place to go through the predict, observe and explain process. Uh, perhaps to go out and find some evidence for what might have been observed and to describe it in the POE uh, framework. One might take the same clip and have students go through a process of describing what's actually happening, synthesizing the evidence that they see on the screen uh, and formulating some ideas about what it is that this aeroplane is actually doing, how it's doing it, um, what contribution it's making uh, to scientific discovery and so on. It's something that could be storyboarded. There is data here contained within this visually and one might want to storyboard that through uh, a mind map type process or, or diagrammatically. So there is, there is obviously data contained within the clip which you could actually break down and analyze uh, in quite an interesting way. And the analysis is perhaps more evident that there would be elements of this which could be uh, selected and, and one could infer from various details within the clip what is actually happening. So in some senses this one clip might be used to do all of these things um, as a, collect, a collection of activity or it could be that actually you identify one sub-theme, one category, and explore that more deeply. Arguably, students having all of these tools available to them when engaging with uh, a resource like this would clearly be very useful. And that's just one of the uh, learning designs within the Dialy framework, and there'll be opportunities to talk about some of the others in due course.